Welcome to Daniel Sheen's lab. There's Daniel. Daniel was a high school student. Uh, what, what year in what year of high school are you in? Junior year now. Junior year, okay, in the city of Boston. And you're looking at his lab, and I'm going to take you around, and you'll see he's got more equipment than most labs. And we'll just give you a little tour here, and then we'll stop and show you a few of the pieces. You may recognize a few of this old equipment. This is really great. Um, Daniel gets most of his stuff from the flea at MIT, which I have been to, and I'll probably go to again this year. And um, we've got a lot of old scopes, mostly HP, a few Tektronics. And here's one that... Uh, there's an HP 1740A, 100 megahertz scope. And Daniel, why don't you tell us about a couple of these pieces? Okay. Well, this one over here, of course, the main frame's a 143A. I got this uh, fairly recently, actually. This one I actually got online uh, just because it turned up and, well, hmm. it's nice. Um, but. What's more interesting is the sampling system in it. So this was uh, the second generation of sampling systems that HP manufactured. Dual channel uh, max bandwidth of 20, mega, 20 gigahertz. Um, the sampler I have, of course, is modified. That's only okay. one channel. That's for a later version. Mm -hmm. Now, when did this? When did HP put out the scope? Do you know? Uh, sometime mid 1960s. Okay. Yeah. All right. What else have you got here? It looks like you've got a um, you've got an HP 141T. Yeah. Spectrum analyzer. Yep. Okay. So tell us about this. Well, that one's got a storage display. Mm-hmm. Or at least it should. Okay. Um, the then the plugins in this case are the basic IF section for the spectrum analyzers they manufactured during the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And the one current RF currently is in there is an 8553B. Uh, okay. 0 to 110 megahertz. And you've got an 8555A yep. module up here. Yeah. Now, is that running at the moment? No, unfortunately not. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's see what else we have here. Let's go back over here. And what have we got here? We've got, this is an HP Pulse Generator Model 212A, Palo Alto, California. Yeah, that's a classic one. That's very early uh, 50s. Yeah. So. Mm hmm And then we've got a six, looks like a 686C. It's a little bit of a newer yeah. model, but not by much. Yeah, that was the third generation of uh, electronic sweep oscillator they made mm -hmm. using a BWO tube. Hmm. Okay, and we've got another signal generator here, a 606A. Yeah, that one's a classic. Um, these are favorites of ham people. I got. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, zero, wired kilohertz to. No, 50 kilohertz to 65 megahertz, so it's handy for low RF stuff. Mm-hmm. And you've got, oh, this is a new, now here's a new one. Yeah. It's a 4262A LCR meter, and that's, that's new compared yeah, to everything else. Yeah, I managed to get that for 150 at the Swap Fest, which was nice. Oh, um, yeah. It's even calibrated. Really? Do you have the calibration, did it come with a calibration certificate? Well, no, but it's dead accurate. I've checked. Oh, standards. okay. Well, there you go. Okay. And uh, what else More we got? More plugins for 140 series. That one, I'm not in. T I'd never heard of this country <laughs> company. N NR. What is that? Nelson, oh, Nelson. Ross. Um, from what I've gathered, I did a little research. It seems like they made some Tektronix plugins as well. My best guess is they were a company that. Made plugins for other people's scope mainframes. Right. Well, you know what? We'll we'll ask the uh, the community and EE Times and or EDN about this, and I'm sure somebody will know. So now we've got a Tech 531. Oh and, yeah, this is fun. Um, I think this is actually 80 megahertz bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Um, so the story behind this is. I mainly got this to so I could use the plugins which I had previously accumulated. Mm hmm Works nicely. Yeah. David, 
This display is a bit dim, but it's very good for low frequency, especially because it's uh, the phosphors longer, la longer type for mm. glows yeah. longer. Oh yeah, okay. And you've got some more inside. modules yep. here, and you've got uh, what else have we got? We've got an HP distortion analyzer yep. 330B. Another 50s one. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, and then we've got a bench here full of oscillators meters what have we got here this is a a 200 cd yeah that's uh perhaps the single most common vacuum tube oscillator ever manufactured uh, made mm. up until mid 1980s really i didn't realize they made them that late mm -hmm. only one uh -huh. we've got some rf volt meters we've got uh we've got a clip on clip, DC clip on meter. amp meter a 400L vacuum tube voltmeter. Yep, huh? VTVM. I remember my dad used to, I think my dad may have had one. And um, DC vacuum tube voltmeters, more of that. And old Heath kit nope, supply. An old Heath kit supply right there. And we've got an HP no, uh, Tektronics. I'm sorry, we got a Tech 422 oscilloscope. That looks familiar. I may have used one of those yeah, in college. Yeah, that's the first one I had, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one was my father's before he got a better one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so your father got you into this? Yeah. Oh, okay. To some degree. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty much a tour of the lab. And... Um,